Let's take a look at the Smart to Move app. How to download it, create an account, add your device, and interact with the app in general. The first thing you need to do is navigate to the Apple App Store and download the app by typing in Smart to Move. Once you do this, simply open the app here in the home screen of your iPad. Now we have two options. We either need to create a new account and add your device, or we need to log into your existing account. We'll start by going through the process of creating a new account. To do so, simply press Create My Account. Here you'll find a number of different fields you need to fill out, including your name, golf laterality, which is right-handed or left-handed, shoe size, and so on. The most important step here for those who are creating a new account and have new force plates is to add the device. We do this by clicking the plus button here. You then navigate to device. You choose the product you have, in this case, 3D dual force plates. And then we type in the serial number, which is on the back of the force plates you have. Once we do that, we press done and add a device. Once you click create my account, this will send a validation to smart to move support and they will do so allowing you to use the force plates. Now we'll go back and we will discuss at using the app with an existing account. To do this, simply type in your email, the password you've created and click connection. The first thing we'll do from here is add your device that you just received to your existing account. To do this, we'll navigate to menu, dual force plates, add a device. And now we have the same screen as we had before. We select the device that we have and we enter the serial number that's on the back of the force plates. I click done, add a device, and now you'll see it added under dual force plates. This will then go through the same validation process with support. I can now navigate back to dashboard. All of these things are mentioned in the quick start guide that you received upon your force plates being shipped and we'll also link in this video. Now that we've downloaded the app, created an account and registered your new force plates, let's now look at the smart to move app and some of the different options we have in here, including creating a capture. From the dashboard, there's two main ways to do this. First, you can click library over on the left. This allows you to create a player, choose that player, and then click new capture. When you do it this way, that capture will automatically be saved under the player's profile. The other way is to simply click the capture button on the left side of the screen. It's important to note that this will not be saved under a player's name. When I click this button, it brings me directly to the calibration screen. And you'll notice how the app automatically detected my force plates. There's a few things we'll need to review here. First, and very importantly, we need to choose the distance the force plates are set apart. You can remember earlier, we set this using the spacer. If you have a TrackMan, you can integrate that here by simply connecting to the TrackMan on Wi-Fi. And finally, you can also select the club you're using for easy categorization of the data. The last thing, and probably the most important thing we need to look at here, is this red notice at the bottom. It says, please check nobody's standing on force plates to continue. The reason this is important is because at this moment, the force plates are essentially zeroing out. If you're standing on them when you press continue, it'll think that whatever your weight is, is zero, and the data will not look correct. So I'm not standing on them, and I press continue. Now that I've done this, we're in live mode, and this is where I can actually step on the force plates. You'll see immediately I start getting live information here, including the center of pressures, the vertical force here, and even video in the top left. Now, of course, I'm just taking a video of the floor in front of me, but if you were with a student, you could actually show the player. Now here, one of the things I would like to point out is foot detection. Foot detection is done by simply clicking this red button in the bottom right. When I rock back and forth on my feet and press start, You'll see on the center of pressure traces up here, my feet are now accurately represented there. Some of the other things we can do in here is look at 3D view. 
where you can see the live vectors and their directions moving and changing. We can also scroll around to the different graphs on the bottom if you would like to. For a quick illustration, I'll just show you in live mode on vertical force. If I squat and press down, you'll see that displayed on the force plates. Another quick thing to note here is your battery indicator here in the bottom right for each left and right plate. Now that we've briefly looked over live mode, we'll talk about creating a capture. There's three ways to do this. One is called auto mode. One is creating a capture where the microphone in the force plates detects the sound of impact and triggers. And the other one is where you as a coach or user can simply click a button and trigger the force plates on your own. We'll look at this over in the simulator and walk through that whole process in depth. Now that we've discussed the three main ways to take captures, I brought Dr. Tyler in to help demonstrate those. We'll start with auto mode. And auto mode is a great way to take captures by yourself when you don't have someone else to do the manual capture. To use auto mode, you simply click the three dot button in the bottom left and you toggle auto mode on. I'll then go ahead and click the X button. And now you'll see in the bottom right, the red capture button has an A in it, which means obviously that we're on auto mode. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is simply hit that red button and you'll see we have to now select feet position mode. On the left, we can choose an auto mode to detect the feet not at all. In the middle, we can choose to detect feet position only at the first capture. And on the right, we can do feet position at each capture. For this swing, I'm gonna go ahead and select feet position at each capture. So Tyler, when I say go ahead, you can hop on the force plates. When you're using auto mode, the most common use is to just simply have it in a tripod. I'll go ahead and press continue, Foot and you can hop on the force plates. It'll now cue you to do foot detection. Get ready to swing. Start swing. Swing detected. Now, we would be able to simply continue to go through that process over and over again for however many swings you want to take. I think one is enough for this time, so we'll go ahead and look at the other two options we have to take a capture. To ensure this is set up properly, I need to first go and turn auto mode off and ensure the microphone is on. Now, you can do manual capture or a microphone capture when the microphone is on, either way. The reason you have the ability to turn the microphone on or off is because sometimes when you're in congested areas, maybe a busy driving range, indoors or whatever it may be, the microphone may pick up other sounds that trigger the force plates. This makes turning the microphone off and using a manual capture very helpful. I'm gonna first have Dr. Tyler do a foot detection. We'll just click the foot detection button in the bottom. I'll press start. And now I'll click the red capture button in the bottom right. First, we'll demonstrate it being done with the microphone. Go ahead. you'll see the microphone automatically triggered the force plates and the data loaded quite quickly. Now, the process is the exact same if you're doing a manual capture. We've already done the foot detection, so we'll skip that. I'll go back to live mode and then I'll click the red capture button in the bottom right. Now I see there's a golf ball uh, image circle on the right, which I can click at impact to trigger the force plates. And you'll see the exact same thing where the force plates are triggered and you see the data. Now that we've created a capture, I wanna go ahead and walk through some of the main features of the Smart to Move app. In the top left, you'll find video. This video comes directly from the iPad and its main purpose is to show the timing of the force data and center of pressure data. In the top right, you'll find center of pressure traces for left foot, right foot, and total. And on the bottom, you'll find all the different graph information. You have the kinetic sequence, lateral force, anterior posterior force, vertical torque, as well as vertical force. In the bottom right of each of these graphs, you can find the magnitudes for the ground reaction force. You'll also see the dotted line across those graphs. And this is the threshold. We'll talk about threshold in much more detail but it is simply a good starting off point for magnitude of the ground reaction forces. Every golfer does not have to do this or will do it, but it gives you a good starting point. If you wanna see TrackMan data, 
you can simply click TrackMan in the bottom left and see the data here. Two of my favorite views are the 3D representation of the force vectors and the dashboard. In the top right, we can click 3D view. And then I'm gonna double click here, just like we did in live mode, which I can do on any of these views to make them larger. I can then move this around, make it larger or smaller, as well as the video. And I can see these force vectors change in direction and magnitude live. Finally, let's look at the dashboard. This is accessible through this button down here at the bottom right of the graphs. This dashboard is a non-graphical way of looking at the ground reaction force data. You'll see the different thresholds as well as the ma max magnitude values. And again, we're gonna go into this in much more detail later where you can learn how to look at this and determine what you may want to do with your golfer. Now let's talk about exporting data. This is a great way to share captures with your students if they would like to view them. To do so, I can click the three dot button in the bottom left of the screen. Then I can navigate to export and I can email the data by clicking this button right here. Your student will need to create a smart to move app and open the data that you're, you send them in the app to view. It's also very important that you have your email set up in the Apple email app on the iPad. Another way to export data that is very simple is to use a screencast. You can pull down from the top right of the screen and click this circle button right here. What that will do is record your screen and anything you say and allow you to simply text, email, or airdrop that information directly to your student. Now I'll show you how to add markers into the app. To do this, I again click the three dot button in the bottom left and navigate to markers. Here, I can take the golfer to different positions, such as address, where I click address here, and you can now see the marker appear in the graph. I could then fast forward to top of the swing and do the same thing. This allows you to quickly navigate to different parts of the swing and see what the ground reaction forces are doing. You can of course do this for impact, finish, and so on. You can also add comments and ratings for easy organization of the captures. To do this, I once again navigate to the three dot button at the bottom left of the screen, navigate to rating, and then I can give it a one to five star rating and type in a comment. This is of course a great way to remember any thoughts or things you were working on with the player for future reference. We hope these product tutorial videos were helpful and make using your new force plates in the app easier. If you have any questions, please reach out to us on any of the platforms we participate in, email, social media, YouTube, etc., and we'll be happy to help. Mm -hmm.